Hi, my name is Nick. This time I'm inside my little blue boat second wind. I haven't posted anything for six months because I haven't been able to use the boat for that time. Um, I've had this ongoing problem with my outboard uh, for the last two years that I have this uh, constant fuel contamination problem. It's, it appears to be a dissolving fuel line, even though they're all new when I bought the boat, or I should say when I bought the motor. But it came to a head in February. I went to replace a, um, a, a gasket on the carburetor, the under cowling fuel line, uh, and the rest of the fuel lines, but that took me nearly three months just to get the parts. One of the byproducts of COVID is that we uh, are having a lot of trouble getting uh, parts uh, and stock uh, for that matter uh, in all sorts of industries, but uh, certainly for outboards. I can't even source a brand new outboard for the boat because there's no stock available. Uh, to hats who don't have anything, they've got about 25 motors on back order. Mercury, Suzuki, Yamaha, uh, they're all in the same position. So uh, four and a half, nearly five months to get uh, some parts uh, for the boat. Finally got it all back together a couple of weeks ago, only for it to fail again, doing the exact same problem at the ramp uh, about two weeks ago. It's July 2021. We've just gone into a super hard lockdown uh, for COVID here in Sydney. So I can't really go anywhere, just parked in the front yard, but that's okay. We're all safe and we're all uh, well. But anyway, that's uh, what I sort of haven't uh, posted a video for that time. Lots of footage, I've got to put a few things together. I've been up to Queensland to do the Bay to Bay Yacht Race on my friend uh, John's Career 18 Mango Madness with his mate Nick. We had an absolute ball. We didn't get to do the race, got all the way up there, launched the boat, had a trial sail and everything else. But unfortunately, the day of the race, the weather was not suitable for us. And with the rest of the Career Association guys who had turned up for the race, we all had to abandon. Um, so this video just uh, highlights a bit of uh, that trip. Uh, the next video, I'm going to do a four-part series. The next one will be about the outboard. Uh, the one after that, I've been doing some jobs on the boat whilst I haven't been able to use it. My companionway hatch slides uh, have never been satisfactory. This is a, a retrofit kit uh, that for this hatch. The earlier models didn't originally have it. So this hatch used to jam all the time. It was very stiff. It had a bit of an alignment issue and I've fitted up some new slides. So I've done that. I've also put a, in the bow of the boat a brand new battery. I had a tiny little itty bitty 10 amp per hour battery which was just good enough to run a few of the lights for the night but nothing else. And I've now put in a 100 amp per hour battery and as you'll see in the last video I've also now fitted the boat with a little uh, electric fridge. So that's why I got that larger battery so I could run that uh, fridge. So in this episode, it's our trip up to Tin Can Bay and our sail on the Clarence River. In part two, we'll have a look at the outboard. Part three, the odd jobs that I've done to the boat. And in the last video, this has just happened the last couple of days, um, right before we had the day, actually before we had the full retail lockdown where we couldn't uh, get out and buy stuff, I've, been, I've run off and picked up my little uh, brass monkey uh, 15 litre electric fridge, which I'm really pleased with. So I'll cover a bit more of that in the last video.
So after we abandoned the race, the next job was to try and get our cars and trailers back. They're up at Harvey Bay, about an hour and a half north of where we were. And the only option we had was to hire a, a maxi taxi. There was nine of us, so fortunately it worked out about 60 bucks each. It was over $500 uh, for the taxi. Uh, we got back to uh, Tin Can Bay, um, de-rigged the boats, said our goodbyes. And then for John, Mick and myself, we headed south, stayed at Ballina for the night. And then the next day we put the boat in at McLean, a very pretty little town on the Clarence River, just up from the Haywood Bridge. And I have to say, it was one of those just right days. It was uh, just the right amount of wind, not too hot, not too cold. And we had a fantastic sail, tacking all the way up to the Haywood Bridge and then turning around and heading back upstream uh, past McLean for a really good sail. Uh, you can see here in this next clip, John's just had the uh, companionway hatch retrofit kits fitted to his boat, uh, like my ones had done. Uh, and you'll see uh, he's also sporting the same uh, track slides uh, that I've just retrofitted to my boat. Uh, but as I said, it was, a, it was a great sail and we had a, a really good time. And then we sailed at Grafton that night, uh, heading home the next day. About five months. Uh, for us, one of the reasons why we're so keen to also have a sail on the Clarence, our Creel Association, our Queensland counterparts, uh, each year organise a Clarence River cruise. They cruise downstream from Grafton, uh, about 40 nautical miles to Aluka and Yamba on the coast, and then they head back upstream, so it's a six night cruise. Uh, it's a very historic area, so there's lots of historic pubs up and down the river. They've all got their own jetties, so you pull up each night outside one of the pubs where you can immerse yourself in the, uh, the local uh, culture, I suppose you could say. Anyway, it's a trip I'd really like to do. Uh, the people I've spoken to that have done the, uh, the cruise uh, really enjoyed it and uh, uh, thoroughly recommend it. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it this year. Otherwise, I'll get myself set up for next year to do it. Turn around, yeah. then motor back, and we'll pull the head sheet down before it gets, gets wet. 